Hi, I'm certainly glad you could join me today. You ready to do a fantastic painting? Well, good. Let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint this project with me. And they'll come across in the same order as I have them on the palette, like always. Let's go on up here, because I've got crazy today. This is, this is crazy day. I found some tape laying around here in the studio, and I just thought I'd show you with a little imagination and pick up a few things that are laying around, you can do some fantastic things. I've taken, oh, this is about two inch wide tape and went all the way around the borders here. Then they had some masking tape, so I just, I just put that in here like that. Then I've covered the entire thing with liquid white, so it's all slick and ready to go. So let's see what we can do. I'm gonna start off today with a touch of a lizard crimson. Just a touch. Tap it into the brush. Just a touch. Don't want to set this guy on fire. We just want to warm it up. Let's go right up here. And maybe right in here, there's a little bit of a lizard crimson. Very, very small amount. Once again, you don't want to set it on fire. Or just, just a little. And use little crisscross strokes, both sides of the brush. And it mixes with the liquid white and makes a beautiful, beautiful pinkish glow. Just like that. Just paint right over the tape. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. Now then, without even cleaning the brush, I'm going right into, right into some midnight black. And the least, least little touch of phthalo blue. Very little paint on the brush. But the black and the blue are so strong that you don't have to clean the pink off. All right, let's go back up here. Now then, I'm gonna start right up here at the top and begin just blending this right down to the pink area. I think today, let's do a very soft, gentle little painting. Just very quiet. There we go. Can you touch more of the black and the blue? <laughs> black and blue. That's what I get when I get in trouble at home, boy. It's black and blue. There we go. And I stay in trouble. All right. Blend it right down. Now be careful. Be careful here because this dark color will absolutely consume your pink. In just a heartbeat, it'll eat it all up. Shoot, while well, I got that going, let's, let's have some fun. This is mostly black. There's virtually no blue in here, so be careful. And I'll just, let's just put a little color down here. What the heck? What the heck? All right. Now then, we'll clean the brush, scrub it on the, there's a screen in the bottom of this can, just scrub it real hard. The screen's about a, oh, about an inch high. <laughs> That's the fun part. Anyway, the screen's about an inch high, and that allows you to scrub the brush, and then all the solid material falls to the bottom and keeps your paint thinner relatively clean. Okay, now then, clean, dry brush. And I wanna just bring this guy together. Gently, gently, gently bring it together. Still using little crisscross strokes. Just here and there. There, see how easy that is? And then very lightly, very lightly go across the whole sky to soften it and bring it together. Now maybe, I'll tell you what, what the heck, this is crazy day and we're just playing. Let's just take the, the corner of the two inch brush and go through a little touch of white, little touch. And maybe there's just an indication up here, very light. I don't, I don't want very distinct clouds today. Maybe there's just a little floater that lives up here. And he just floats around the sky. I've just used the corner of the brush. Then we'll blend that out. Just to, just to give the hint of a cloud. Just a hint. Don't want anything too bright, too sharp back here. I want this guy to be very passive. Okay, maybe, oh, maybe there's even a little floater coming right down through here. If it gets too bright, just take and, and just work with it a little bit. Just work with it. It'll blend into the color it's already on the canvas and just go away. There we go. Now then, I'm just gonna fluff these little clouds up with a dry brush. Just fluff them up, and very lightly, very lightly. Just 
blend it a little bit. A little bright right there. I want these to be very soft clouds. So we'll just blend it and go back over it. And that easily, it goes away. That easy. Okay. <clears throat> now then, let's build us a happy little mountain. And for that, I'm gonna take a little bit of Prussian blue, a little black, a little brown. Shoot, we'll throw some crimson in there too, lizard crimson. Pull it out very flat, cut across. Do we have that little roll of paint? There we are. Now then, maybe there's a happy mountain. He lives right about there. So you just push that paint right into the fabric. And all we're looking for here is just a very basic shape. You're only interested in the top. Just right up here on the top. You could care less what's happening in here. It's of no concern right now. Later on it will be. But right now, no concern. Now then, show you a little trick here. Watch here, we'll take this and pull it down. Now with that, I get a little paint on the brush. Let's take that paint and go right up here. And that easy, we can make the indication of a little mountain that lives wee wee back in the distance. He's very soft and very far away. See, by pulling this paint up here and doing it, then it's exactly the same color, just a different value. There we go. Now pull this one distinctly in front of it. <laughs> Isn't that sneaky? I thought you'd like that. Okay, by pulling it out, we remove the excess paint and blend it right down to nothing. And don't worry about the tape. Just pretend it's not even here. There. Okay, we'll wash our brush. Give it a good wrap. And off we go. You know, a couple of series back, we, we introduced this idea of using contact paper and, and making ovals and all kinds of shapes. Since then, I've got letters from all over the country showing me what people have done taking this basic idea using contact paper. My friend Nat, who lives in Canada, he sent me some pictures the other day, and he's taken and used octagons and all different kinds of shapes cut out of contact paper. And it's the same basic idea. Try all different kinds of things at home. You'll be amazed at what you can do. All right, let's take some Let's take some titanium white, pull it out very flat. Really pull it out flat, and then cut across like that. A little roll of paint. And we'll go right up here, and we'll put some highlights on this mountain. Just touch it, and we're gonna apply no pressure whatsoever. You just let the knife literally float across the canvas. Just float. Here we go. Put all kinds of little things in here. There. Let's go right up here. There. Okay, and just decide where you think light would strike your mountain. And just let it fall on there. And you want the paint to break. Now, when I say break, I mean leave all these holes in it. And for that, you must have a firm paint. If you have a thin, soupy, oily paint, oh, you're gonna be in agony city. You're gonna, you're gonna be a mud mixer. And then you're gonna holler at me. So be sure you use a paint that's very firm. That's so important. So important, a little bit right there. Okay, see, and you can just keep on and on making big decisions where you want this to be. Now then, let's make a shadow color. Gotta have a shadow on that mountain. For that, we'll take some white, some white, a tiny bit of Prussian blue. Prussian blue is very strong. Be careful, be careful. And then a little black. So we have black, blue, and white. There, and just leave it sort of marble like that. Don't overmix it. Cut across, and we have our little roll of paint again. Always using that little roll of paint. Let's go up here. Now then, decide where your shadows are, and once again, using no pressure, just drop in some happy little shadows. See there? Just make decisions where these shadows live. 
make a decision and do it. This is your mountain, so you can do anything here that you want to do. There we go. Now watch. Let's do this one right here. I'll show you a little trick here. If you've painted with me before, you've seen this. See, now we want to push this peak right here back. Watch here, watch here. Come right down, right down, right down, and go distinctly through it. And look at that. See? <laughs> Did you know you had that much power? You can move mountains. You can move mountains. Boy, when I go home, I can't move nothing but the garbage. But here, here, I can move anything. There we go. Okay. Now then we'll come back and let's, oh, look at that. Look at that. You can just put all the little peaks and stuff, maybe? Yes. Yes, there is. You're right. There's one that lives right there. You knew that, didn't you? There we go. You can just keep on and on till you've covered your entire canvas with mountains. And that's fun too. Nothing wrong with that. Go back, drop us in a happy little shadow here and there. See there? Just let it blend right out. Okay, let's go right in here. Every, every highlight needs a shadow. If he doesn't have a shadow, he just, he'll just lay there. He won't come out and play with you. All right. All right. Now then, let's create some mist down here at the base. And for that, I'll take a two inch brush and I'm gonna tap, just tap. Follow these angles. If they come down this way, then tap down that way. There we go. Always follow those angles, so it's very, very important. And if everything works just right, you'll have a nice misty base that you can literally see detail in, but yet see through it. Over here, follow these angles, see? Isn't that easy? You're fantastic. Now then, I'll beat the brush a little bit. That'll take the excess paint off, then lift it upward. Just lift it up, lift up. Look at that, look at that. I've probably painted 20,000 paintings and I still get excited when I see them. The beautiful, beautiful effects you can make so easy. Because for years I was a traditional painter and I, oh my gosh, I agonized over paintings. And now then, now then, I just do them. Okay. Painting should not be agonizing, it should be fun. You should enjoy what you're doing. Okay. Let's come along here and, and let's have some fun. I'm gonna, I'll tell you what, let's just go right into a little bit of yellow. And I'll reach up here and get some, get some sap green. And I'm gonna pull a little bit of black into that just to dull it down. Okay, there we go. Tap the brush, tap it. Let's go back up here. Maybe there's a little foothill, just a little hill that lives right here. All you have to do is just tap. I want this to be a nice bright one back in the distance. Tap. Now allow it to pick up that color we laid on the canvas. See there? And get, just disappear right down so it gets softer, 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 softer. See there? Look at that. Softer, softer. Almost down to nothing down here. Good. Good. Okay, let's, let's take some black, Prussian blue, brown, Ooh, there's some sap green, we'll throw it in there. You can throw in some crimson. It doesn't matter, it really, what you're looking for is a color that's very dark. Let me wipe my knife off here. And I'll grab the old fan brush and let's make a, let's make a couple of happy trees. Load a lot of paint into the brush, really fill it up. Okay, let's go up here and let's decide where a little tree lives. He lives right there. Touch, that sort of gives you a guide at the top of the tree, and then just, just use the corner, just the corner, and as you work down, push harder and harder, so it pushes the bristles downward. Let's, let's make several trees in here. And in your world, in your creation, you decide. You want 10 trees? 10, 10 trees is what we're looking for. Let's make several. That'll give you a chance to practice. 
Now see right there, I want that little tiny bit of green to show through because that'll, that'll show that there's something happening behind there. Okay. Now trees don't all grow the same. Some are skinny, some are a little heavier. Shoot, some are just, <laughs> they're like me, they're just tired. So, however, don't think your tree has to be a certain way. Trees just grow however makes them happy. And sometimes when they're little, maybe maybe a big old bear walks by and steps on them. Gives them a hurt. Ooh. And they get little crooks and bends and just make up little stories. Think what happened to all these little trees. See, now here's one that maybe this one kicked him. So he's leaning over. Just sort of pushed him right out of the way. You get mean trees too. Okay. Shoot, let me put a couple more over here. Little trees are fun to make. And maybe way back in here, there's just a little indication of some trees. Just take, maybe you can see that, just take the, the brush and tap it downward. Just make the indication of some trees that are far, far away. That easy. Maybe there's one right there. I'm just gonna cover the whole canvas with trees here. Maybe I should stop. I get carried away sometimes. I like to make these little rascals. There, we can pop in some dark color. Now then, I'm just gonna take a clean knife, nothing on it, and just sort of scratch through here and there. It'll make it look like some little tree trunks. You could put color on it, but you don't have to. things. All kinds of little details. That easy. Now, without cleaning the brush, because it has black and blue on it, I'll go right into the yellow, and that'll make a beautiful, beautiful, rich green. Let's go back up here. And with that, I just want to place the indication of a few highlights. I want to keep these trees quite dark for the contrast, but a few little highlights here and there. There's some sparkly, happy little things. Right up through here. There we go. And pretty. These are the kind of scenes my mother likes. She's a fantastic lady. She lives in Florida and she's enjoying the sunshine now. She'd have to be a fantastic lady to put up with me. Well, you, you got to be something to live with a crazy painter. There we go. Her and I go fishing together, but we're not very good fishermen. We we catch we catch a fish and we put a band-aid on him, put him back in the water, and wish him well. <laughs> Send him on his way. Okay, back to the back to the old brush here, and I'm just using a little bit of green, and I'm going to pick up this dark color and begin creating the general lay of the land. Just tap. Continually tapping, tap downward. Look at that. And just allow the brush to touch that dark that, that you made your trees out of. And just begin creating all kinds of little effects. And I'll add a little touch of yellow ochre, a little Indian yellow here and there the least little bit of the, the bright red. You can make this look just like a happy little meadow out here. And the more you tap, the softer it gets. It gets very gentle and very soft. There. Just sort of work these colors back and forth. Tap them together. Like so. Wherever in your world, you make the decision where, where all these little things are and you put them in. There we go. And you can, you can change the lay of the land. Watch, watch right here. Shoot, look at this. Look here. By changing this angle, you can make the land come this way. There's no end to it. You can just go on and on and on. See? 
baby. Come, look at there. Isn't that neat that you can do all of that? And here and there, drop in little darker colors. Okay, maybe right out here, maybe the sun's gonna hit this. So you can go back and add little highlights where you want it to really stand out. Where you want it to really shine. There we go. Tell you what, <laughs> you know me. Shoot, uh, I want a little cabin out here. That's such a pretty, pretty area. Now there's several ways to make little cabins. One of the easiest ways is to take your knife and scrape out a basic shape. If you just take, it, it does two things. It allows you to lay out your, your little cabin without being committed, but probably more important than that, it removes excess paint. So your next layer of paint will stick much better. See there? That quick, you can just scrape out a cabin shape. Now, let's take some Van Dyke Brown and we'll put in an eave or an overhang, whatever. Then put some, all we're doing right now is just blocking in color. Just blocking in color. We're not too worried yet about details. Look at there. That easy. Let's put some dark right there. This is just straight Van Dyke Brown. That's all it is. Straight old Van Dyke Brown. There we go. Now then, maybe up here on the roof, let's use some red, a little bit of dark sienna mixed together. A little bit more than bright red. Ooh, there we go. Cut us off a little roll of paint, as usual. Now then, just take and just let this sort of bounce right along. Just let it touch, bounce, have fun. See it? Look at there. Okay, now then I'm gonna take white. Let's add a little bit of black to it and make gray. White and black. Pull us off a little bit of paint and we'll go right up here. Zoom, pull it down. See there? Straight down. Now, for the other side, I want it darker because not as much light's gonna hit that side. My mountain tells me my light is coming from the right. So I'm gonna get the small knife. It gets in those little areas better. And I'm gonna reach right up in here. See, that's much darker. And this little knife, boy, it's great for these little things like this. And while I have the little knife, let's put us a, a door right there. Shoot, now we can chop this off like so. We might even want a, a little window. Hmm. Anything you want in your cabin, you can do it. Now then, let's go right here and put some grass right around the, the foots. Right around his little foots there. Okay. I'm gonna put, just so this stands out, the least little touch of white or light color right along this edge so you can, ooh, nice. Nice little cabin. Let me grab the old fan brush. Let's take some straight Van Dyke brown, little dark sienna mixed in it. Gotta have a happy little path. Maybe it comes down, maybe it goes right on out of sight behind that hill. Comes out here, wherever you want your path to go. Look at that, look at that. See there? There we go. Reach right up here, grab a little white and it'll mix with a brown. That'll give us a little highlight. Just sort of let that skip across there. Just blip. Hit it nice and quick. Just let it skip. Like so. And clean it up with a little bit of, a little bit of the grassy areas right along like that. There. And that pushes your path right into your painting. Let's get crazy. Tell you what, let's go into a, Big bunch of brown, dark sienna with a fan brush. And right, 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 right there. Right there lives a happy tree. Big happy tree that lives right there. And let's give him an arm. He's got an arm that lives there. There we go. Okay, pull that right down. Give him a little foots. Okay. I'm going to paint thinner with a liner brush. A lot of thinner. I want this 
to be just like ink or water. And with that, we'll put the indication of a happy little, little branch here and there. There. Okay. There we go. And just as many or as few of these little limbs as you want in your world. This one here maybe comes clean over here. Look at that. All kinds of them. And we can take, we'll go right into a little bit of white, and let's just, look at there, add the indication of a little highlight right on that. Just here and there, so that little tree trunk stands out. Has a personality all of its own. Little stick or two down here. And let's just clean up his little foots. Fix our path. I think we about, about have a finished painting. Now then comes the fun. Let me show you. Bring the camera right up here close. I'm going to grab this and watch it. Isn't that neat? Now, if you, when you're doing this at home, if you painted this brown in here, for example, it looks just like you're looking out of a window. It's a super idea. Give it a try. Use the contact paper, tapes, all kinds of different things. You too can make some fantastic effects. From all of us here, happy painting. God bless, and we'll see you next time.